Welcome to our discussion of Reconstruction. Specifically, we'll be discussing the end of Reconstruction, how it came about, and what happened because of it. Okay. Reconstruction came to an end with something called the Compromise of 1877. So first question you ask, what does compromise mean? Well, when people settle a disagreement, when people come together, each side in, this, in a disagreement gives in a little bit, and they come to some conclusion to stop the problems. And that's what happened in this Compromise of 1877. So what was the disagreement? Well, it was a pretty important one. It was who was going to be President of the United States after Ulysses S. Grant decided not to run again. So let's go and talk about exactly what was going on. So again, Rutherford B. Hayes was running for the Republicans and Samuel J. Tilden was running for the Democrats. And there was a disagreement about who actually won. Now what did this disagreement look like? Let's go to a map. So there you go. The blue are the states won by the Democrat, Samuel J. Tilden. The red by Rutherford B. Hayes. Now you can see at the top the electoral vote total. Now it's electoral votes that actually elect the president. You see that they're basically the same, 185 to 184. The problem is you need 185 to win. Now when the voting was actually finished, Samuel Tilden had 184 votes and Rutherford B. Hayes only had 165. Now I know the graph says 185, but before the compromise he only had 165. So how did that come about? Well there was a disagreement in the states of Louisiana, South Carolina, and Florida. There was one group that said the Democrats had won and there was one group that said the Republicans had won. Plus out in Oregon there was one person that votes for the president, called them electors, that there's a disagreement about him. So that makes 20 votes are basically up for grabs and they couldn't come to a solution. They couldn't come to an agreement about which way it was going to go. Now there was a lot of fear about what this was going to produce and we can look at some cartoons from the time period to help us understand that. So you see here, there was fear that there would be bloodshed. In fact, there were threats to form armed bands, almost like an army in March on Washington, if Tilden didn't get their, their way. So you see the picture there of the hand of reason pushing down the hand of conflict that's reaching for the pistol. And you see that it highlights underneath the the trigger of the pistol, civil war, as in, oh no, there's going to be another civil war. So they're starting to get people kind of upset that maybe bloodshed was going to start again. And then this picture here, making it clear who is at fault for, in the view of this cartoonist, these problems. So you see the pistol being pointed, and in the other hand is a bullwhip, a bullwhip being a sign of the days of slavery. So each side was trying to make the other side look like the aggressors, like the bad guys. All right, hold on. It's a problem sometimes when your computer screen freezes up, especially when you're in the middle of making a video like this. But hold on. Okay, there we go. So what actually happened? Well. The Democrats did complain that Tilden had been cheated when this compromise was being pushed through, when the votes were being counted. And an agreement was actually eventually reached. And what it said was that all federal troops still in the former Confederate states would be removed. And you say, why is that a big deal? Well, if you don't have federal troops there to enforce the law, sometimes they're not going to follow the Reconstruction laws. Now, the only troops remaining were in Louisiana, South Carolina, and Florida, but it just so happens those are the states that were in you know, dispute as to who had won. But the compromise finalized the process of removing those federal troops. Also, there was the agreement that one member of the Southern Democrats would be appointed to the president's cabinet, cabinet being the helpers to the president, so there'd be some influence from the Southern Democrats there in the presidency. Also, and this seems to be the key to resolving this conflict, to making the compromises, there was an agreement 
to support laws to build another transcontinental railroad, which was like a center of business, on the southern plan in the south, which would help rebuild the south, which leads to another piece of the compromise, which said that there would be laws made in the country that would lead to factories and support for developing businesses in the south, because a lot of businesses, of course, have been wiped out during the Civil War. Now, in exchange for that, the Democrats in the South only had to agree to two things. Number one, support Hayes for president. And number two, respect the rights of African Americans. So I ask you, do you really think that they would? Or would that become one of the problems? Because if there's not anybody there forcing them to, will they ex respect the rights of African Americans? So... What did it do? Well, unfortunately, some of those rights the African Americans had gained during Reconstruction were lost. Because what would end up happening is former Confederates who were not allowed to be part of government during Reconstruction, when they were allowed to take control of their governments back, they started being elected again as leaders of the government. Senators, congressmen, even governors. Now this process of taking back over, of getting back to what kind of it was before, not fully of course because they couldn't remake slavery, but they called this redemption. But anyway, so again, the big things that happened is federal troops were removed from the South and African Americans ended up losing a lot of their rights. So stop and think as we get towards the end of this video what did people from the north think about reconstruction what did people from the south think about reconstruction based on what you've learned in this unit do you think reconstruction was a success or not so again the summary federal troops were removed from those three states where they still were and African-American rights were lost, and former Confederates who had been kept out of politics were able to get back in. So, thank you for your time. I hope that you've learned something from this, and if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask your teacher.